you know, I think this will be the biggest fight of the year. I don't know what other event tops this, so I'm really excited for that. I don't think this could affect my legacy or my career. I respect this man. I'm still gonna knock him out, but respectfully knock him out. This fight is very important. As soon as that bell rings and we punch each other in the face, it's gonna be a war. Five minutes, fellas. Five minutes. Right, appreciate it, man. Oh, okay, you getting that bed in before the boom, oh, huh? Yeah, 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 LA all the way. <laughs> what? Oh, come on, man. You know it's Boston, baby. KG, I understand why you said it, but it's LA. Jay, are you serious? You know what? It's LA. Why are you standing up? Because it's LA. L you know what? You ain't scared me. Let me tell you something. That ain't it's enough. Boston, Boston, Boston. It's LA. Hey, what's up, Certified? Today, man, we got the head Pelican himself from Detroit. <laughs> man, one of the best, man. My man Willie Green coming through. Check us out, man. Hero Certified. Hey. Man, um, first off, thank you for coming through, man. I appreciate you, man. Um, I'm a huge fan of your team. Huge fan of y'all and what y'all are doing, man. Huge fan of CJ, huge fan, huge fan of Zion, and huge fan of uh, BI. Talk about your core, man. Like, yeah, man. We number one, thank you for having me. No. And uh, excited to just get a chance to chop it up with you about just hoops. Um, yeah. But but our team, man, we young and uh, we're hungry. And uh, adding CJ. We we were able to elevate our team to make it to the playoffs. Adding right, him, right. but you know we got Brandon who. It's a three-level score. Wow. CJ can do the same thing. We played all last season without Zion, so now adding him to the mix, mm. you know, will make us that much more better. But it's work in front of us. And so gotcha. all our guys understand that. And then our young guys, Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, mm. Jose Alvarado, yeah. Najee Marshall, um, Devontae Graham is coming in shooting the ball. So we, we Jonas Valanciunas, who's a vet, we got a good mix. Yeah. Um, like you said, he took a major step, and a lot major. of it had to do with his summer work. Oh, um, really? Yeah, man. He, he, you know, rented out a house, took all his family, his people, and they just, that's where they were. They he didn't go nowhere. Oh, and wow. every day, six, seven hours a day, wow. you know, he was just in the gym. He was lifting, he was doing stuff, put on about 20 pounds of muscle. Wow. During the season, he was able to maintain about 12 of it. Mm. And um he was absorbing those hits. And that's he was punishing say. people. That's about to say. He looked he looked strong. Yeah, he was stronger. His game is like he, he's one of those guys, top yeah. three, you know, one on one ISO, uh, can get it any way you want to. Mm. And now he's just gonna keep building from there. He, he's added muscle. Um, he's a great teammate, always doing stuff for, for, for younger guys and guys around him. They love being around him. I love being around him. Right. And um, you don't gotta look for him, he's gonna be in the gym. North Carolina kid, right? Yeah, Kinston, Stack. Yeah, Stackhouse raised him. I heard, um, you know, anytime you come under that brand, it's solid and it's verified and it's certified. Shout out to Stackhouse. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of him, man. I'm, I'm eager to see the young mix of him and B.I. Uh, him, B.I. and uh, Zion. Mm -hmm. You know, both Duke boys, ironically, right? Isn't it that is. crazy how that yeah. happened? It is, man. They, they, they love New Orleans, huh? Love it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, New, New Orleans is uh, it's a great city, but th those two, man, it, like Zion is a once in a lifetime type of talent. Man. Um, and the key for him is, once again, making sure he's healthy. About to ask you that. What's next um, for him, man? What do you think turned that corner on him? Just consistency, I always say that with superstars mm -hmm. and being able to be night in, night out. That's it. Yeah. Um, working on the health aspect of it, uh, diet, you know, diet and eating the right way, all the things that yeah. uh, he understands. Come with it. Um, but I tell people, like, look, Zion got hurt because he was working. Like, it wasn't like he was just at home sitting around. He was working out. He was working on his game. No he had his people with him. Unfortunate. And he's young. Mm. And so that's devastating to go through at a young age where you're supposed to be, like, this, the pillar of our organization. Um, so he worked his way back. Uh, you know, we were able to reward him with, a, with, a, with his contract, much deserved. Right. And now the pieces are there. It's up to us to put the work in to be the team we need to be. When you came in, man, I asked you, 
You know, because a lot of people don't know how much of a dog. When I used to play against you, dog, you was a pure dog, man. I respect oh, everything about you. You know what I'm saying? I was shocked when you went into coaching. But then when I think about, you know, you're, you're also, with the dog, was an intelligent player and had an IQ. You know, mm-hmm. did you know you was going into coaching when you um, when you was done, or when you were starting to get towards the part of more of the latter part of your career? Ah, uh, you know what I did, and really, I did not know I was going to be a coach. Um, but so I'll, I'll take you, kind of hit you with the middle. When I finished playing, I took a year off. Mm. I didn't I didn't go right into anything. I just quiet, spent some time with my family, and to try to figure out what I wanted to do. But as I started to evaluate my own career and why I had the career I had, which, you know, playing 12 seasons, being a good role player. Mm. It was because I was being coached by veterans, mm. Aaron McKee, Solid. Kevin Ollie, Solid. Uh, DC, mm. Greg Buckner, Solid. Eric Snow, right? So I'm being, and, not, and we fighting for the same positions, right? Oh, wow. I'm, I'm coming in trying to earn minutes and these guys are helping me. And I'm, at the same time, I'm playing with AI. Mm. I want to hang with AI every night, but they like, no, nah, you can hang with AI, but you can't hang with him every night. You got to get your work in so no. that he can trust you as his teammate. No. So you got to be the first one there, the last one to leave. And because of them teaching me how to eat, how to dress, mm. how to go out, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a long career. I wanted to get into coaching and do the same thing. Um, and I think you can do it from this position. Like, I don't have to be an assistant to help our players become better young men. No doubt. So. What did you um, find to be in coaching that you didn't anticipate? <laughs> Managing people. Or that's, that's really hard. what it is, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, and I say that with respect to the fact that we got some good, high character people, but it's still every day, it's, it's uncomfortable for me because I'm not a big talker. You know, I just like to go and do my work, no but this forces me to have to have conversations and make sure I'm touching people in the right, right way and right. checking in and things like that and communicating, over-communicating expectations. Wow. Um, mental health a real thing in the league, eh? It is, man. Do you remember any mental health when we played, bro? Or didn't nobody <laughs> want to admit it? Or, like, I think about that. Yeah, I I don't really remember it. Right. And I, I, don't, I think people were scared to talk about it and probably was experiencing it, but just didn't know what it was at the time. All right, all right. And then the pride, too. I ever had yeah, a lot of pride yeah, in it, right? Yeah. You not to say that this, I'm not, I'm not alluding to none of that. Um, I say that to say that um, there's also confidence through the roof with a lot of these kids. That's one of the things I love about the new generation. Um, um, I'm eager about the player development. You know, I'm a skilled guy. I watch skill. You know, I watch some of the particulars a lot of times. Talk about um, the importance to you and developing players and and how that growth is really the growth of the team or how you would anticipate a team growing. It is. It's extremely important, especially with young players coming into the NBA. But having direction mm. with player development is, is important also. Define that. Go a little bit deeper. So what do you mean when you say that? Direction is what's going to get you on the floor. Mm. And um, Working on things that can yeah, get you on the floor. Yeah, working on, your, working on a part of your game that's going to get you playing time. So that transcends, I got you. Right, and so... Players in here working on a bunch of stuff that they're never going to do, yeah, never going to have the opportunity. Yeah. Got you. If you're working on things that just don't necessarily translate well, it's taken away from what you actually do well. And so those are conversations that we, we're having constantly. Like, this is what you do really well. Let's make sure you're doing 70% of that. And then you can work on some of your improvements, but you ain't here because of what you can't do. You hear because what you can do. So let's work on those things, and then let's keep building it out from there. And then they got to play. Mm. Um, one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three, four-on-four, whatever. You got to play. Right. And just having that balance. I believe in you got to get your shots. You got to work on different aspects of your yes. game. But playing is important, too. The new NBA season is here. And literally, anything is possible on the court this year. And if you're ready to make a bold pick, bet MGM is the place to go because they're giving new customers 100%, yes, 100% risk-free shot at the action. Just sign up at BetMGM, use bonus code KG1000, and your first bet is totally risk-free. Yes, risk-free, up to $1,000. Yep, I said it, $1,000. Crazy, right? Whether you want live bets, futures, player props, or you're going to throw down the big-time parlays like the big ticket, BetMGM, 
got it all for NBA fans this season. And then they've even got boosted odds specials on some of the biggest games from coast to coast. Look, BetMGM is also called the king of sportsbooks for a reason. And all you got to do is download the BetMGM app and use bonus code KG1000 when you sign up. And you'll get to place a first bet risk-free, yes, risk-free up to 1000 bucks. It's time to turn big plays into paydays, baby, with the BetMGM, an authorized gaming partner of the NBA. How much of conversations are you having with trainers that's outside of your own your own circle and you know your own structure, right? How much are you actually uh, in, in? I won't say in bed, but how much are you partnering and working with players, trainers, to transcend what you're trying to get that player to grow to and that player having his own? Yeah, you know, there's there's some some PD guys that do it, and there's just some that don't, and we try to have those discussions with our guys before they leave, so they at least had the information to mm. give to their trainers. But then you have some some really elite, off-the-chart trainers that check in with the team often. Oh, wow. About what they, you know, okay, what do y'all see? That's and, dope. And they kind of piggyback off each other, so to speak. I mean, if he's going to actually make a player better, it, it, it almost makes makes sense to be in tune with the team, to be it in is. tune with his everyday guys, because his everyday guys is working them out when these trainers are not even available or not even around. You know, during the year, right? Yeah, for sure. No, it, it makes total sense. And, and that's what, that's a big part of the game. Mm. Um, who you work with in the offseason. I mean, and, and everybody's trying to reach the same goal, which is to make you better. Right. Uh, but the information is important because, you know, if a guy's working on five dribble step back, but he, you know, that's not something he's going to do a ton, let's just limit. Don't. I'm not saying don't do it, but let's put the focus somewhere else. Mm. What is your influences, man? Where you where you draw from? Where you where you pull? What's what's inspiring you? Like what uh, inspires you? <laughs> my uncle was the number one inspirer in my in my life. Uh, he was the first person to go to college, play basketball. Um, he passed away, you know, a couple years ago. But if you know, everybody has that person in their life that mm -hmm. just like supports you. Uh, obviously, my dad too, my dad's brother. But he was the guy for me that. Coach me all through when I went out, Pee Wee, Pal, all this stuff, and then um, just supported me all the way through. So that's number one. Number one as far as people, but my faith as well. Oh, faith wow. and family, just constantly trying to make sure I stay in tune with that. Wow. I love yeah, it, man. man. Um, I want to ask Paul this uh, question. I wanted to ask you this. How come we don't have kids playing in Summer League no more? Remember when kids used to play in Summer League and then you would have and I don't want to have this be like a loaded question, but I'm really curious. Why don't somebody, you know, I used to look forward to the summer league because it gave us a chance to see the, you know, the draft guys who got drafted, you know, get, get a chance to see them fresh out, you know, mm -hmm. right at boom. And now none of the guys play. Why do you think is that? Uh, uh, the only answer I can come up with is that a lot of the young players now are so important to, they like, they playing major minutes. Hmm. Um, during the regular season, so I, all I mean, so I don't know if that's that's the reason, that's not mm. the reason, but you know, it's a different league. It is. It's a different league now, and so just adjusting to it. Different you know, attitudes yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, but you still got some dogs out there, and uh, I'm a big supporter of the new generation of players, the dog. Um, and just trying to maximize what they do well. But as far as that question. That's my, I don't have to answer to that one. <laughs> like, I wish I did have that one. I see the training is different. Yeah. The training is different. It ain't so much north-south no more. From coming from a training or being able to, you know, you got trained a certain way. Like, I, I'm noticing that the training and the moves are different. Well, one thing is for sure is the game is more, uh, it's just up and down. Yeah. Like, it's really it's good. Not, it's not a lot of uh, post-up situations where, I mean, you and Tim Duncan used to go at each other, mm -hmm. and they they had to make sure they get the ball to you, and mm -hmm. everybody else kind of, you know, played their role from there. Well, now the game is like, it's open, it's spread out, mm -hmm. and it's, everybody's going, you hitting, you cutting, you moving, and uh, because of it, the training is definitely different. You barely see a ton of weights, but it's more movement-based, mm -hmm. and so that's something I definitely noticed uh, about the, the way the game is played now. Are there still plays being called during the game, or is it just, it, I swear to God, sometimes yeah. when I'm watching Will, it looks like his flow, bro. It don't look like yeah. he, he caught the pick, he, he rejected the pick, he had a pass, it's kick, kick, kick. 
shot, boom, missed it, kicked it back out. Like, the style of play, not only looks, are we in the list of, of, of plays, or you just, you have your principles and kind of bear, or, you know, your kind of structure that you kind of stick to and you play out of that? We have plays, but like I tell our guys, and this is just how I, what I believe in is, I want to give you an environment. Mm. And within this environment, you got different options. Because I can only do so much. Just you guys are the talent. Right. Your talent gonna take over. All I want to do is give you an environment to play mm. in. Gotcha. And this environment allows you to be at your best. And so we have several different environments oh, wow. based on who's on the floor. Like if it's Brandon and CJ, it may be something similar. If it's Zion, it may be different. If it's Jonas, that may be more of a post-up environment and now it's cut and moving, but they know how to play within that. You play with one of the more prolific scores in NBA history. How much of that experience do you share with your players? With B.I., somebody who's probably getting double team, triple team, getting fronted, damn near a triangle one every night. He has the premises on him, but comes responsibility is because he's so damn good. Same with Zion. You know, talk about um, sharing those experiences playing with a person like AI who really had the back, the, the whole league on his back mm -hmm. as a guard. Man, he's, uh, first of all, Allen, um, one of my all-time favorite basketball players Allen and too. teammates. Salute. Uh, Straight up to AI in the yeah. And um, just having the opportunity to be on that team and, and learn from him. The one thing about him is he was relentless. Like no matter what, he's coming at you. Uh, but he also, he doesn't get enough credit for this. He trusts his teammates. Mm. And so I just remember one time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a rookie. I get in the game. He passed me the ball. I passed it right back to him. And he cussed me out. <laughs> and he said, if I give you the ball, I'm giving you the ball because I want you to do something with it. Mm. Don't worry about getting it back to me. Right. I'm going to have 30 by the end of the game. Mm. So you ain't got to worry about that, young fella. I'm going to have 30. But that means you open, and I trust that you can do something with it. Go. And so it taught me a lot. And um, those are some of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with Brandon. I'm sharing with CJ Zion. It's like, you guys are going to be elite no matter what. But you also help them become Facts. better players, and you, you take them with you by trusting them. Facts. Because in the meat of the game, they may have to hit a shot. It's going to get back to your hands, but you just got to continue to make the right plays. Probably one of the biggest misconceptions of development is decision-making. Mm -hmm. How much of film are you watching? How much are you letting, obviously you're giving, you're giving your star players rope, but how much of the, the players developing intellectually is a big component? Extremely important. Especially with your major players? Extremely. We watch film every day. I suppose to. I can, almost, like, I'm serious, like every day we watch a film. And, you know, we, when guys come in the, in the gym, I have film looped already Ooh. about the message that we want to hammer home that day. So they may come in and it's in the training room and it's in the locker room and it's looping. It could be offense. It could be transition because we need to get better. It could be defense. Um, and so, you know, I'll have, you know, transition offense and then I'll show some clips Ooh. and then it'll go to half court offense and we'll show some clips. And so we watch a ton of film. I think that's a for us, we all, a lot of us are visual learners. We right. see something, we can go out and mimic it. Well, the more we show them, the more they, they get the concepts. What would you say is New Orleans culture? What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your DNA when you, when, you, when you put your hat on it, when you hang your hat on it? Our DNA is that, number one, we, we connect with each other. Oh, all right. Um, we work our tails off, and we have a fun doing it. Oh, that's what's up. And that's New Orleans. It's like, it's a community. They still work hard. They treat people the right way, but they have a ball. Oh, God. And that's what we want to create there. Yeah, what's it like not only playing in multiple eras, but then coaching in them? It's, it's like being a life learner for mm. me. Um, basketball is art. It's a mix of art and science, but to me, more art. And um, mm. when you're around talented people, they dictate the game. And so when I first came in, and you know this, there was a lot of, like, you had to be big and strong as a wing because there was a lot of isolation. Facts. They just took you to the mid post, mouse in the house, whatever Facts. it was. And if you couldn't guard those type of plays, you just couldn't play. Um, and then the game got a little bit more open and a little bit more faster. Where now it's like positionless. Wow. 
Wow. There's no traditional centers, and I won't say no, but not a ton of them. Gotcha. Um, and so playing in a couple different eras of basketball and now coaching, it's the, the best players, coaches, whatever, just adjust to the game because, wow. you know, Monty Williams has a, has a, uh, he has a phrase that my rules shouldn't stifle talent. And so the rules of the game has changed, Ooh. but the talent is just continuing to go. And uh, I love that about the NBA. I love that about watching guys play. You love the way our game is evolving? I do. I do. I think it's evolving. And I think um, the only way that it can evolve is that guys have paid attention to guys like you. Wow. They, they watch the great players. Watch the history. They watch you shoot threes mm. at seven feet, bring the ball up the court, make plays, right? And so now you inspire seven footers to be guards. Um, and so to me, it's, it's a tribute to all of the players that came before us. It's like the game is just going to continue to evolve. And now it's, it's our responsibilities to, to just make sure we, we help these guys maximize that platform. So, yeah. I am, uh, you probably don't even notice, but I'm a huge fan of just Michigan. You know, I'm a huge Derek Coleman fan, huge Steve Smith fan. You know, Steve Smith was the first 6'8 point guard at this, you know. Um, he was a huge influence. I was a huge Webb fan, you know. Uh, loved Jalen. Love, <laughs> you know, just being a fan of Webb made me pay attention to Jalen, Vashon. Uh, I actually got drafted with Vashon and just, um, yeah, just paid attention to a lot of the, uh, Michigan, not just, you know, Detroit, but just Michigan, period, man. Talk about, you know, D-Town and growing up, you know, still go back home and all that good stuff is still what it is. Good to see it grow, too, man, real shit, but you know, I don't know if you knew that. It was crazy, you know, to hear that you're from Detroit, but I was a huge fan of just Michigan and all the athletes that came out of that. Huge influence. No, I didn't know it, but I knew you and UNC Wade were tight when y'all yeah. were younger growing mm -hmm. up, just yeah. reading and, and, and kind of watching y'all, too, but Man, I love Detroit. Like, it's it's really a part of my DNA. And um, my connection with all of those guys is that Perry Watson yeah. was Jalen, Vashon, Howard Isley, Anderson Hunt, yeah, Antoine God. Jobert. He coached all of them in high school. Wow. And then he went to University of Michigan and yeah. was the head assistant with the Fab Five. So now he coaching Chris, Jawan. Right. Well, I went to University of Detroit mm -hmm. because he was the head coach there. Oh, wow. My mindset is that he's already coached. Wow, greats. And greats. Yeah. And I want to be coached by That's him. What's up. And so our summer pickup. I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got... You forget about who comes out of yeah, Detroit. I know, know Seattle had a bunch yeah. of players, but it's a lot of our, players coming out of the shot, a lot of players coming out of Detroit. Our summer pickup when I was in college, 17, mm. I mean, you got Howard, mm. Vashon, you got Jalen, you got Mo Taylor, Garbage. you got Tractor, Oof. you got DC, who's the big homie of everybody, Smitty, Stackhouse is playing for the Pistons, so he was coming up playing with us every day. Rashad Phillips, Jermaine Jackson, Dez Ferguson, who all played at University of Detroit. I mean... Y'all had like a crunk man, we for are, basketball almost. That's what it sounds like. Our pickup games were incredible. Real. And, and guys that didn't... People don't even talk about it. Winfrey Walton and wow. Willie wow. Mitchell and these guys wow. like that. Oh, wow. That was dogs coming up in high school and college. So we 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 had some fun, man. Oh, that, man. That's I love it. I miss those days because that's all we did. It, we, I don't even remember shooting hundred jump shots. I just remember twelve o'clock we playing. Oh, wow. Five o'clock we playing. Eight o'clock we playing somewhere else, and then we at the gas station eating chips and drinking Gatorades and talking all night, and then doing it again. What gyms y'all at? We was at shot them big, shot them gyms. Yeah, we was at Schoolcraft College, Saint Cecilia, mm, uh, Saint Callahan Cecilia. Hall. Mm. I mean, we was everywhere, man. Jay, Jay Rose was like leading it, and we was having a ball. That's what I say. Who would put those games on? Who leading the head on that? Making sure everybody. <laughs> oh, hey, look, they were hooping that too. Where yeah. we at? Who putting those together? Um, we had an older guy named Glove who had everybody's numbers, mm. so he would kind of get the gym and. You know, Howard and Jalen and those guys was kind of leading. And then if it was at University of Detroit, Perry Watson would make sure, you know, he he got everybody in there. And, it, man, we just had a ball. Shit just, talk. Just no, shit talk. Oh, Jalen. Shit talk. All day long. Running that shit. Oh, all day long, man. Ooh. Jay, you know, Ace is quiet, yeah. so, but he killing out there. Straight up. Bo and Jay going back and forth. Ooh. You know, they getting on H because when in high school, I guess Ace was passing. So ain't Jaylen. nobody letting it go. Ain't nobody, <laughs> right. Ain't nobody letting nothing go. It all no, comes back up, right? Nothing, man. We had we had fun, but that's really 
how I learned to play basketball was was just playing around pros and watching how much they love to play. That's culture too, though. Yeah. And they and all them gyms in there. I yeah. love it, man. So, well, thank you for that. No, I appreciate it. Straight up, yes, man. Sir. Thank you for coming through, man. Thank you. you man. It's an honor, man. Seriously, man. It's an honor to be you know here and talk to you. Um, I love that when we used to hoop, I always thought you you played the game with a certain respect, but then you was a dog at it. Like, oh no, I ain't. Just because he cool yeah. and he quiet. No. <laughs> this motherfucker real I pit over here, Funny boy. story about KG my rookie year. He, you in Minnesota, I don't even know if you remember this. We was in Philly, and y'all had just scored, and we was taking the ball out. And I was, I was like, I had my back turned, and I caught it, and I turned around, and you was crawling on all fours. And I'm like, I'm like laughing, but you was serious. Dead ass. You was crawling. Like, guard me, getting ready to guard me full court in all fours. And I just, like, I didn't know what to do. You know, and I, I used said, to, this dude is nuts, man. <laughs> <laughs> I used to always, Flip used to always have me in traps. So, you know, I'm coming from high school. So, you yeah. know, in high school, we trap. So I used to always, if, if you time it right, the guy who's taking the ball out used to always just be random and throw it in so you can get a steal. Mm -hmm. So... Flip used to let me either go for the steal as long as I got back, right? But then he would let me zigzag the guard a couple times. So I used to love that. Mm -hmm. You never know, you, yeah. the pick a guard. By the way, I used to play ones after practice with the guards. I never would play with somebody in my side. I used to always, it just helped my time and all that, right? Mm -hmm. So I used to call that the snake when somebody couldn't see me and you look and you start laughing. But if you would have put it down, I thought, I, I, listen. I so just yeah. happened to peek over my shoulder and I was like, what? I've never, <laughs> never seen it before. He had, you know, they scored. It was crazy. And then here he come. He crawling on all fours. I'm like, man, this is Kevin cool, Garnett. Cool, like, cool, what is, what's, cool, he, cool. what's he doing? What are you on? Like, what are you on? Right. From that point on, I was like hooked. I was watching him every day. Like, what's this, like, the energy? I used to love the you and Tim Duncan match. Yeah. Those were my favorite. One of she. My favorite of all time. She. Godly. She. She was probably my favorite. She, she yeah, dog. Because, you know, we Philly kid yeah. coming in. Energy. Wild. Hair. Well, you know what I'm saying? Let's play But thank no, you, dog. I appreciate it, man. I'm watching y'all this year, man. I'm rooting yeah. for you, man. All this the best to you. My man. All right, thank you and your family. Yes, right? sir. Same with you. I didn't tell you? No. Oh, my God. Did I tell you? No. Did I tell you? No. It's so easy. I drew a picture of our family. It sucks. Do it again. 5G is a Chinese conspiracy. Thanks, Amy, you're a star. The award-winning sketch series Inside Amy Schumer Returns, streaming October 20th. I'm in a commercial. Oh. Exclusively on Paramount+.